Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar, and this is Big Discussions 76. My original channel, first of all, please like this video, please share it, and please uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not. Right now, I'm just under 1,700 subs. The subs, some of them, they come and they go. Sometimes the number goes up and then they slowly bleed away, but I'm about eight away from 1700. So if you're just listening to this, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Those are free. The likes are free and, and everything is helpful. In any case, um, please like, share and subscribe. Uh, if you want to donate something to the channel, that information is below in the description box. You can also leave a super thanks. And also please consider joining the Big Words LLC newsletter. In addition to being a YouTube content creator, I am also a writer with multiple blogs and working on my own book project. So working on my own book project, I want to encourage uh, reading and scholarship. And I've recently uh, interviewed uh, uh, authors, veteran and published authors. Uh, and I've asked them about their art and how they've done what they've done and why they've done what they've done. Uh, so I want to encourage reading and scholarship over here. So I've read uh, passages from uh, Liza Mundy's uh, The Richer Sex. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I, in 2023, I intend to lighten my load in terms of all of the activities I'm involved in. And so I hope to leave more time for reading. And thus on this channel, there will be more story time. So I'm going to read another passage here from um, chapter six, uh, entitled Let Go and Lexapro. The previous section I read from in the previous video was uh, entitled Women Can Be Competitive Too. Uh, this section is entitled uh, Newsflash, Men Are Doing Housework, Women Stunned and Reeling. Women out earning their husbands will feel territorial and more than a little bitter. And laid off men will not be the only men staying home. Like their wives, these men are part of a larger and more long lasting movement. A study presented by sociologist Karen Kramer at the 2011 Population Association of America conference found that in the United States, as elsewhere, there has been a steady increase in men staying home. Not because they have to, but because they want to, because they think it might be nice to have the life women have enjoyed. After every recession, Kramer and her uh, co-author found there is a permanent upward blip in the ranks of stay-at-home fathers, whose numbers have doubled in three decades, rising from uh, 280,000 in the late 1970s to more than half a million now. Stay-at-home dads made up 1.7% of the population of married fathers uh, in, um, from 1976 to 1979, and 3.3% 3 .3%, uh, from 2000 to 2008, so it doubled. And this is a conservative estimate. Looking only at men with at least one child under 18 who, who have no earnings at all, and whose wife works full time. Men relegated to the home discover they like it. In coming years, women will come to terms with the fact that men have invaded their space and are thriving in it. Husbands have envied their wives, absolutely, reflected Linus Orentis, a downsized auto industry program manager who agreed to be interviewed when he came into a different Detroit area jobs bank. Orenta's a precise man who was wearing a neat button-down shirt and slacks articulated uh, what has long been men's work-life challenge. You want to spend more time with your kids, but you don't want to be seen spending so much time that it looks like you don't have a work ethic. For him, work-life balance had become simpler because what it consisted of uh, now was life. I'm at home, washing, cleaning, cooking, doing all of those duties 
uh, I've always enjoyed, frankly. You can find it. Our kids' favorite day of the week was always Sunday morning when Dad made pancakes. Now I say I got promoted from one day a week to seven. Like many men I talked to, he found housework easy. His only challenge was that he tended to read the directions on the laundry detergent bottle way too carefully, approaching it as a task that needed uh, less to be rid of than master. Brad Speck, an affable assistant director at a jobs bank in Livonia outside Detroit, was familiar with this emotional journey, having traveled it himself. When he was younger, he worked in a factory making the wooden shelves on which Beanie Babies are displayed. It was repetitive, meaningless work, and he couldn't stand it. When he lost his job in the 1990s, he found himself the hands-on parent for his two young children. The first day he realized he did not know how to uh, diaper a baby. He had not changed the diaper on their older child and apologized to his wife for not having helped her. As time went on, he said, I made supper. I did all those things that were foreign to me. I started baking. I can make cinnamon rolls like nobody's business. Being laid off changed his priorities. He got an offer to operate a pizza franchise, but felt the hours would be too demanding and wanted to continue attending his children's sports games. So he opted for the jobs bank and uh, a more manageable, family-friendly career in human resources, a female sector. Other men, he said, will come to the same place. His prediction came true faster than he might have expected. As the recession eased slightly, men's employment picked up as men began to infiltrate female domains like nursing and teaching. Spending time in recession-ravaged, permanently recalibrated in Michigan, I also had to wonder whether some men were holding out from taking new employment because they were savoring the forbidden pleasure of being home. The day after I met Tammy Schmidt in the Port Huron Jobs Bank, I visited their home to talk to her husband, Stephen, who seemed to be giving free reign to his inner house husband. Around 2.45 p.m., he had the ingredients for country fried chicken assembled. Genial, extroverted, he is a mechanical engineer by training and temperament. And it pleased him to approach cooking with the foresight and attention to detail that he brought to sales proposals for industrial machinery. To the left of the cooktop, he had set up a draining station on which the chicken could rest after cooking. The Crisco was out and on the corner, and so was a bowl in which he was thawing boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Not the best cut for fried chicken, but he wanted to use up what they had in the freezer. I am so, so much unstressed, Stephen told me, bustling around the kitchen island of the Dutch colonial whose yard, neatly cut, bordered with well-tended perennials, also showed the results of his zeal. He had lost his company car, but hardly missed it. There was a motorcycle in the garage uh, that was more fun to ride. I, I never was before so healthy and happy. Far from resenting Tammy for being the breadwinner, he said he fantasized about Tammy taking a second job so she could support him. He was kidding, but only sort of. What he wanted was to win the lottery. He was sure a new job would come along soon. He had a couple of prospects, so he considered this period an interview. Every day when Tammy came home, they would take uh, their yellow lab uh, butkus for a walk. Then Tammy would sit at the island and drink a glass of wine while Stephen made them supper. This, <laughs> this seems familiar. Um, in a way, which I won't get into. A native of Germany, uh, he had been in the United States for more than a decade, working in sales uh, to automotive companies. He and Tammy met in St. Louis and uh, moved here 
when his division was transferred. The work was high pressure, and he did not miss it. If Tammy could support them, he could devote himself to what had become his true calling, the culinary arts. If, if I would not have started my passion for cooking, the recession would have been much more debilitating, he said. He had even started uh, pulling together his own cookbook in a loose leaf binder. On one side was a folder in which he kept recipes he wanted to try, including a, a baguette recipe from Julia Child, a tri-colored, a tri-color farfall with creamy uh, mushroom sauce, and a Tuscan-style porterhouse steak. He found recipes by watching cooking channels or searching the internet. Uh, if he tried it and it was good, he put it on uh, the other side for permanent inclusion. Bacon dumpling soup made the cut, so did Kansas City sweet and smoky ribs. I'm going to end up with a library of dishes, which I feel are signature dishes, which would be worthy potentially to be served in my own restaurant, said Stephen. Some people have a uh, fantasy league in football. I'm thinking about my own restaurant. So in this household, Tammy Schmidt, at the end of her own workday, was presented with the unexpected challenge of a husband who seemed in some ways slightly too well adjusted to being at home. Stephen's cooking takes some fortitude to face on a regular basis. She is a small woman who stays in shape by power walking. Having uh, recently undergone radiation treatment for breast cancer, she was preparing to participate in a 60 mile walkathon for uh, the Susan K, I'm sorry, the Susan G. Coleman Foundation. And it's hard having a heavy meal every night. She also, this is really good at this ending here, she also found it disconcerting having Stephen home all the time much as she loves him. When he was working and traveling, Tammy got used to having evenings to herself where she could curl up and watch Grey's Anatomy and eat nachos for dinner. Now Stephen was there, always there, eager to talk when she walked through the door. At the end of the day, she said, I have to tell him, whoa, Dude, back off. Okay, I thought this was really, really interesting because once again, it, it, it speaks to um, a lot of things. It speaks to the economics principle of unintended consequences. Uh, but going back to the Nicholas Eberstadt book, um, and you can find many of his uh, discussions here on YouTube. Um, his book is entitled Men Without Work. I just purchased the post-COVID edition, but it speaks to a little, it speaks a little bit to um, the fact that some men, in this instance, we're talking about married men who have children, some men have become comfortable being at home uh, and they don't mind it. And it's interesting that their spouses, in some instances, it seems from this book, they resent that. So there's something about uh, men staying at home that's uh, unsettling and disconcerting. Uh, I thought it was also interesting at the end that uh, she felt that she needed some personal time. You see this in couples a lot. Uh, the fact that, well, in this instance, she got used to him being out and on the road and she had time to, to herself to watch Grey's Anatomy and to eat nachos. Now he's at home preparing full course meals for her uh, but she misses having the personal time. And when she comes home, she needs him to back off and give her some room. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Haven't you heard stories of husbands coming home and their wives wanting to talk right away, but those husbands needing time to kind of decompress and unwind from their day. So this reflects a swapping of the roles. In a lot of ways, women have become men and in some ways, well, should I say that? I'll just say that what we're seeing is a swapping 
of roles. In any case, again, this was from uh, chapter six from Liza Mundy's uh, The Richer Sex. It's a commentary on uh, the changing workforce and uh, the changing gender roles. Uh, this section was entitled Newsflash, Men Are Doing Housework, Women Are Stunned and Reeling. Uh, this should also say, based upon that last passage, men are enjoying staying at home and doing the housework. So let me know uh, what you think in the comments uh, section below. Uh, did this resonate with you in any way? Are you seeing any of this in your personal life? Again, uh, in 2023, uh, I plan to, uh, well, I offloaded some things. So I plan to have more story time just like this here on the channel. Um, yeah, so let me know what you think in the comment section uh, below. Would you, if you're a man, would you like to be a stay at home uh, husband or spouse or significant other? Uh, if you're a woman, are you okay being the breadwinner and coming home to a full, a fully cooked meal and a, a fully manicured uh, yard? Let me know what you think. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to donate something to the channel, that information is below in the description box. Uh, you can also leave a super thanks. And also, please consider joining the Big Boards LLC newsletter. Uh, with that, everyone, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Uh, and always try to do your best. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.